These computers are ready right now. You can see those two computers are in the back doing imaging, but these are ready to be deployed, right? These are on workgroup. Workgroup meaning they're not managed right now. They're not on a network, domain, basically we call it domain. They're not connected to the domain controller. So to do that, we have to go in and go to the properties of the computer and tell this computer to connect it to jobskillshare.org domain. You might be using some other domain for your company, right? To add these computers to domain and then you can manage things up. But my suggestion to you is if you have a lab like this set up, then I prefer don't even move it. Leave it there set up each user because it's going to be user specific settings now this is where things can get tricky and that can be stressful when you unplug these computers put it back on their t uh, desk and do all this stuff unplugging plugging back bending down you know save yourself some time and if you don't have this ability all this lab like this then set up things somewhere else where you don't interact with the users till you're done with it so the first thing you should do is to connect these computers to domain and then each computer whoever you're giving this computer to set up every basic stuff over here like emails um you know some OneDrive setup or any other setup that is just normal basic setup for every user just do it here Make it prepared that you don't have to deal with small things when you go to the desk over there. The only time you are going to be dealing with stuff is when you're transferring the files from that old computer to this new computer. I'm going to show you that. First, I'm going to show you how to join these computers to domain. Uh, and in this point, I can't show you my users because um, you might have different users. So each, like, this is where you guys won't see that stuff. I'm going to go back and find who needed the computers get their usernames and i have temporary passwords and i'm going to log in as them okay and each person each computer i'm going to set it up uh and then i am basically going to do more after that but i'm going to show you guys how i join a uh, computer to domain uh, the active directory we're going to be adding it basically um, you have a server. I'm not going to basically go and explain this stuff because we have a course, Active Directory Users and Management. Please take that on jobskillshare.org. But um, in for just to show the reality here that those computers that I just showed you, I'm going to add them to the Active Directory here. Um, and I'm not going to add it from here. I'm just going to do it from that computer. It will automatically add itself to the computer section right here. Your domain is going to be right here. And then you'll have computers, uh, however your network engineer, server administrator set up this stuff. You'll see computers over here or maybe if they have any other con like, you know, a folder set up right here, then they can go over there. But as you can see, when I add those computers, they are going to automatically come over here. And now they are network managed computers on domain. Uh, they will be on the domain controller. They will be added to the domain controller so that we can manage them from central place. I... On each computer, I printed out a paper, and on that paper, I put a computer name, username, and temporary password because it's much easier sitting in front of the computer looking at the paper than logging into the server, going to the Active Directory, finding out the username, finding out the computer name, whatever you, I mean, it's just kind of hard, you know, um, and you might not have that kind of access like that. So, this is what I did, um, and then I basically go into this computer. So, let's say, for example, I want to change this computer from work group to domain con controller and I want to add it to the active directory all I got to do is to turn on this computer and right now it's on the work group I'm gonna go cancel this and here I am going to click on start and right click here go to the properties Uh, as you guys can see right now that remember when we were imaging we were naming these computers so there that's like a dummy name <clears throat> sorry about that oh, I can't even stop my video now all right sorry about that so I came now I basically click on change settings here and when you do that here you can change it to domain you want to add it to active directory click on change right here and this is where your domain controller will be added so if you put like jobskillshare.org when you click enter it's going to ask you for username and password this is where you put your domain administrator password you should have those rights so help us should have it at the admins or anyone and they will put that stuff in their username and password in there and then it will say welcome to uh whatever whatever domain 
this computer is a part of domain, whatever. It's going to give you a message. And then you restart it, and that's it. This computer is being managed from that Active Directory then. All right, so when I put my domain um, address, like jobskillshare.org, and I click enter, then I get a prompt. This is where you put your username and password. I'm probably not going to show that because of privacy reasons, so I'm going to click OK and then show you the message. So here, when you put that username and password, welcome to jobskillshare.org domain, and then you restart this computer, and that's it. And then after that, you do the user base settings, and I'm going to show you that when I logged in as a user. So you'll get this message, you want to restart this machine, we'll say yes. And now this machine is getting restarted, let's talk about something here. Now, this could have been done even more, you know, better ways, but try to learn from basics. I mean, this is basics right here. You could make this automated, you can even go details, and that's more advanced stuff, like how much do you work on imaging? How, what is your job right here? Like, is this your job? Is this what you do daily? Is this what you deal with daily? If you are going to be doing this type of stuff every day, then yes, you need to learn more about imaging. You need to be more using more advanced scripts and stuff like that. So then you will automate a lot of process. Even this is a lot of automation going on over here. But you have to look at your work over here. Like how much, how much is this? Like, is this your daily stuff? If it's not, if it's like me, I have to do it like once in a while and I have to do it right away. Still, I have a lot of automation going on, but I prefer doing it this way also because then I know everything is working correctly. So it's really up to you how much more advanced you want to get into this stuff. But this should be like, you know, basic stuff and everybody knows, should know this stuff. So then even if you, if, if like things like, remember in our first video, the server didn't work for all those computers right there. Then we came to USB. Then it's all about solutions. You know, you should know these solutions and you don't have to use these softwares because your, your company might not even allow some of the softwares. Um, then you should know, at least you should have this idea in your mind that you could do things like that to make your work easier. Once you're on domain control, Active Directory, you, this computer is a part of domain now, so then you will get this type of message. It's not on a work group anymore. This is being managed now. So I put the username that the username and the temporary pass for this user, specific user that I'm working on right now, and I'm logging in as that user right now. And it should automatically log in because, remember, we didn't add this user over here. It's on the domain. It's being managed now. So there you go. It's logged in at that user. Now we're going to set up that user email. Um, and how to do that, you just basically go to the email. Before that, there could be some activations that you need to do with Microsoft Office. So um, to do that, I'm just going to open Word first. And it will, it will activate my Word for this user now. So you'll get a message like this. Do you want to activate? I'm going to say next. And it will go online and then say thank you. And it's activated. That's it. Now you might have some scripts running for printers. We have that. Then that's not in this video. We're not discussing that. So it's up to your company. So we're going to say printer for this person. This department is using printer number seven. And we'll say yes. And that makes the printer default for that person. Now I'm going to set up an email for this person and I'm just going to log in and to Outlook. Outlook for the first time, it's going to go ahead and connect to Office 365 and it's going to ask for the same username and password, the email and the password. We'll give that and it will just say, okay, let's get the emails to this computer. All right, so I'm going to say welcome to and click next. And then when I click next, it's going to automatically pick the email from this profile. I'm already logged in as a user. So I'm going to do next and do that process. Um, but after this, it's basically just putting the username and password for this person. So it already picked that username. It's on the top. I can't show that. Like I said, privacy reasons. So I'm just going to click next now. And it's basically establishing and it will ask for a username and password once it looks. So as you guys can see, it's, it has a it has an email and I'm going to put the password, the temporary password, and then it will be connected to Outlook and the Outlook will be ready to go. So when you put the right password, you'll see three checks in there and then you'll just say finish.
All right. Once you finish, you clicked on finish, and what's going to happen? It's going to just do add-ons and first time, and it will look for some things, and bam, everything will open up, and it will download all the emails. And that's it, guys. Same process. When you go to OneDrive, you'll just go to OneDrive. I'll show you that. And the rest is just company-based specific settings. Um, and then after this, I'm going to show you how we're going to take this part. Now, this is a basic setting for that user, but this user is already having a computer out there. Now, getting those files out from that computer, putting into this one is another step. And that's also, it, it makes life easier when you have everything synced like OneDrive and things like that, because then there's really not much on those computers. It's just that favorites and things like that. Once you put that, this project is over. All right, I'll see you guys in that video process for this is to get a USB, plug it into the old computer right there, and grab documents, um, desktop, ferrets, wherever you think your users are saving documents on that machine right there. And you probably would know when you start working where is your main places where they save. So you could have one uh, cloud type of backup like a OneDrive or a Dropbox and then the rest they put stuff in their documents desktops they go here and there but most of the time it's just specific areas you know you won't be looking inside the computer C drive this is just the policies you have to set for your users so you can't really do that that's impossible if you have like 1,300 computers you can't just go sit in front of each computer and look into specific you know inside the c drive and see if the user put something in there that's their job they will put it they'll put it in on the desktop or documents section so at least you can do something you can get their signature for outlook documents desktop favorites uh you can you can help as much as you want but you should put a policy that what folders am i going to get from each computer and the rest uh, you shouldn't be worried about that um like again this is up to companies um, then what you want to do is make sure the computer is uh, properly shut down, the old one. Grab that data, put it in the USB, and then you can use some kind of scripting. Now, I, I actually had a script um, when I was doing this backups and stuff like that, and I forgot to bring that USB with me. So I uh, basically, I'm, I'm not going to show that how to copy a document to this USB. So that's what I'm doing. I'm putting everything manually now in this from this computer only because... Um, I didn't bring that script for for this computer at this point right now, so I don't have that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just plug this computer in there. And remember why I said that sit down is sitting down in one place and doing everything ahead of the time is much better because then I can spend that. I can create this computer 80% or 90% and make it totally ready when I get to this point where I have to do unplugging. All I have to do is just plug this computer in there and it's ready to go. Just put this stuff back onto this machine. You don't have to worry about too much. It gets stressful when you have too many machines because you're do, doing the same thing here and there again. Um, even if you have scripts running, it doesn't matter what you do. If you have that same thing again and again repetitively, then you will get a little stressed with that. So, um, yeah, that's this is the last thing that I want to share. I really want to show you guys script, but maybe later on in another real world scenario, I'll show you. Thank you for watching with uh, this whole project. Uh, I know it was a little longer, so um, but you know we learn a few things. Let's just summarize quickly, quickly. So the first thing is mentally preparing yourself that you know we, we why we working on weekends would be a better thing for for coming days. That's number one. Then we learned about images and how to do images in different ways: server, USB. Uh, type of imaging then we said that what would be the best place to do imaging like you know sitting in a lab because you have more uh, monitors and you work on it quickly and you prepare everything then we say we use papers to do kind of like uh, to see where you're working on what you're working on and then the last we uh, learned about the whole process like you know moving the data is another thing the whole thing was to just kind of like you know have have yourself a process like some kind of process that you can follow for each computer like you know same way because if you don't have a process then you're just if you have if you don't have process even if you have 10 computers it's going to get you stress and imagine if you're working on more than three to four hundred computers and imagine if you're working on more than thousands type of computers then good luck because I would, I would definitely think that there would be a company with thousand machines, and they would have some some department doing this whole thing. 
But if I have actually seen people that had 70 to 80 computers and there are only one man IT people, and trust me, that's where things get really stressful. So thank you for being with me. I'll see you guys in uh, different videos. This is Danish and be a part of jobsclearshare.org. You come and join me, uh, help other people, or if you can help us, don't be shy. All right, see you guys.